Plus, I do tend to like my own equipment. This is my go-to camera, and it's not everybody's choice because many people go into mirrorless cameras, and I do have three mirrorless cameras at the moment outside of this one, but this is the one camera that I choose to shoot with. It's still the same megapixels as everybody else, but it still feels a bit more of a SLR format. And what I mean by that, with Sony's and some of the like Fuji's, you've got a menu driven system to access what you need. Whereas this, you can set your basics from here and everything else is controlled from the top of the camera. So when I'm shooting, I can run around the camera like this. I can dial in things, I can look like this. And it's very, for me personally, it is very close to hand and I can I virtually use this eyes closed. So the Nikon D850, Standard lens I normally put on it is a 24-70, I'll come on to that, but at the moment I'm using a 14 to 24mm Nikon lens. And the reason for that is because it gives a distorted view in terms of the way it looks at a picture. And the good thing about this is it actually shows more of the background for so, for example, some of my campaigns, um, which I'll put into the clip now, you'll see that having wider angle lenses actually is benefit to seeing the location. Why go to a location and not see it? So that is the Nikon and the 14 to 24 mil lens. So the, the other lens that I've used, and this is my staple lens for a lot of the shoots that I've done, and I've been using this lens, the same Nikon lens for nigh on 14 years. It's a Nikon 2470mm f2.8. It's my workhorse, you can see. It's a bit battered and weathered and torn. The reason why I use a 2470 is when I'm on location, for example, then the models are booked, the location's booked. You go all the way to Iceland, or all these beautiful locations have been in the last five years around Europe. But the thing is, the client wants to see the model in the environment. What is the point of me putting a 105 mil lens or an 85 mil lens and throwing it right out? They don't want that. So what we do is we place the model in there. We we'll use a 2470. It gives us the ability to pan in a little bit, zoom in a little bit, and slightly throw the background out of focus so it becomes a background and not included in the image. And that, what we do is to throw a little bit of lighting onto that to make it a little bit more like a theatrical background. The other lens that I have, which I, I think I bought last year, not really had a chance because of COVID, but this, this is the Nikon 105 1.4 lens, f1.4. That is a very fast lens. So for example, if I am on location and we go from the main shot, which I just mentioned the 2475, 2470, then what I will do is I will pop this lens on and um, I'll bring it in a bit closer. So this lens is very good for close-ups, portraiture, and if you want to do three quarters of more of a distance, then you'll throw the background right out so it'll become blurred, which is really great, really great to be able to pick the model out and to make a stand out from the background. One of the things that I used to use within film, but I used, I used to use all the time you had to, but what I use quite rarely now is the Sekonic light meter. If you're using flash, it will give you a pop of flash reading, which is great. Using LEDs, not so much. It does take the reading for you, but I'm pretty much able to control the light within the camera. Cameras are giant light meters anyway. I used a range of different lights that I keep in my bag, small ones and big ones. And you couldn't really do this with film, but you can definitely do it with digital. If you haven't got LED in your system of shooting, you really need to. So I use something like this. So this here. You can, can control the colour and the density with the, the controls on the back. And you put two of these batteries in like so. You need two of them, only got one. But you put two of them, charge them up and they last for ages. But it's great portable system because three of those are the same. You can create the same three point system. But this here is a very bright light. You can shoot on a 60th, an 80th. Um, and 125th, whatever you want, and you can control your eyes so you can get a beautiful look. So definitely see if you can get the equivalent. The equivalent are the rectangle ones, they've got about 160 LED bulbs on there, a couple of batteries like that, or even this one, which I'll put a link in the bio, or something like that. That's a fantastic bit of kit. I've just bought that, 54 quid from Amazon. This is about 100 pounds from Amazon or, or eBay, but you'd have to track this one down. In terms of portable lighting kit, that's the kit that I use for LED and ambient lighting. You go into a room, you can easily mix this light with the light that's already there. That's what I do all the time. So a lot of my shots are lit with these. If you're not bored already, then hopefully you'll like this. So another portable kit, um, pet bit of kit that I take with me, I take three of these along wherever I go, whether it's fashion, advertising, location, whatever, take three of these. These don't cost a lot of money. I think three of them are about 180 quid as a kit. Three of these in your kit are tiny. So for example, you can put them in a bag, you put three in a bag, put them on stands, they power up, you can put batteries on the back of them. 
they're absolutely fantastic. But you can still get the same as the other lights. They're not as powerful as the other lights, but they're pretty good. If you're doing portraiture, fashion or anything, you can still do the split lighting, Rembrandt lighting, butterfly lighting, avant-garde lighting. These here are the Profoto B1Xs. What we've got are, put that there, okay. Well, essentially what we've got here, I've got two of these heads. They are 500, but you can control the power fantastically well, so switching it on there. You can see you control it up or down, like so. Yeah, so power up, modeling lights on or off, and you can fire it, there you go, like that. So these are very powerful and very maneuverable, but this, you can put this against the sunlight, or these, you can put them against the sunlight, and you overpower the sunlight. So what you can create is a very theatrical, cinematic looking background. So although I've talked about the equipment that I use, you know, it's, how I work. So there's no right and wrong way of using the equipment that you've got, but I would say some of the great lenses are the ones that you use and you're comfortable with. So for me, it's a 24 70 mil lens, uh, 105 lens, or the equivalents of those lenses within the Fuji or the Hasselblad or whatever medium format camera I come up with. Using the best lens suited to you and your style of photography is the best way forward. You become comfortable with your style and your process and this allows you to use the lenses. You become comfortable with the, the ranges and the effects that it gives you. That's what I would suggest that you do. Don't get too involved in, I need this lens and that lens because it's not necessarily about the lens that makes you a better photographer. The best equipment doesn't make you a better photographer. In fact, you could take a bad camera with a reasonable lens and get some brilliant pictures if you know what you want to be. You have to be creative. If you're a creative person, then you can make anything work.